One of the problems that we oftentimes see in Rotary is a lot of top-down stuff, you know. It, um, Rotary says to do this, or, or the DG says we got to do this, or you go to a... Uh, go to a seminar and it's just them talking at you and telling you stuff that you need to do. What we're trying to do here, ladies and gentlemen, is we're trying to get the tools into your hands so that you can make the change at the club level. Because that's where it all happens. Okay? It doesn't do me any good to go around and give seminars if I don't give you the tools that you need in order to make your club Rotary brand experience better. Okay? So that's what this is all about today, is for you to take this stuff back to your club and actually implement it. You know, work, maybe take an entire meeting sometime and just work on how do people invite people to Rotary. How do they answer the question, what is Rotary? You can get a bunch of these cards and you can practice answering the question, what's Rotary? Or maybe you want to have somebody, a friend from a neighboring club, come and be a mystery guest. See how they're greeted. See, see whether they're invited to come sit, or if they come over here, Noel looks at them and says, don't be sitting there. So, mystery guest. You know, you can examine, are we really personally inducting people? Are we really involving people in the family of Rotary, or are we just going through the motions because that's the way we've always done it? So that's, that's what this is all about today. And you know what happened in 2016? The Council on Legislation, look at that acronym, C-O-L. <laughs> Council on Legislation gave clubs that want to a new degree of flexibility. Now, please understand, this is not a mandate. You know, a lot of, a lot of clubs Several years ago, they, they, they put out a, a streamlined bylaw that you could adopt for smaller clubs if you wanted to. And a lot of clubs read that, that this was the new mandatory bylaw, and they had to dump um, vocational service from the board. Remember that? <coughs> and, and it wasn't at all. It was, it was a, an ability to try to be more flexible for smaller clubs. Well, this Council on Legislation 2016 said, if you want to, you can create all kinds of new membership classifications. You can create a club that meets only a couple times a month. You can count a social event as a meeting. You don't even have to take attendance if you don't want to, and on and on and on. But remember, that's not a mandate. It's flexibility. If it'll make your club better, you're going to be allowed to try things. There's no rotary police that are going to come around and, and, and check on your meeting. There's actually a club that meets in Evanston, just outside Chicago. They meet once a quarter for two hours in a brick and mortar setting. Everything else that they do is optional where you can go to another club meeting or they'll have a social event or they'll have a work project. And there's something going on every week. So there's plenty of opportunity for those people that do want to do something on a weekly basis, but also opportunity for those that don't. But again, remember, this is all optional. If you like things the way they are and your club culture is good and you're providing a good Rotary brand experience and you don't want to change anything, you don't have to. So um, if you haven't heard, you formed a, a passport club here uh, fairly recently. And uh, anybody familiar with the concept of passport club? A few hands, a few hands. Well, the gentleman that's in all those skits, you know, the little, the little videos we've been playing? <clears throat> that's Michael Rileno. He started the very first passport club three years ago with Glenn Fong down in uh, Sacramento. Now, um, the Rotary Police didn't come and shut them down, but they did have a, um, some conversations with them at the time, saying that the club really isn't compliant. And then, in the 2016 Council on Legislation, they ratified everything that they're doing. So now passport clubs are springing up all over the place. And it's an exciting concept, but it's a new type of club. 
that creates an opportunity for younger members to join at a very, very good price point. Additionally, that flexibility has created the ability to create more diversity within the club, which is really important. Now, any of you ever been to any Rotaract events? You ever notice how when you go to a Rotaract event, the diversity is incredible? And part of that's just an age thing. You know, as, as we get younger in our Rotary clubs, diversity will probably solve itself. Not anything that we really have to work at that much if you're creating new young clubs. But our older clubs, are they actu actually reflecting the community? And oftentimes they're not. So that flexibility of creating new clubs with a lower entry point could be a way to really, A, drive up membership, but B, also solve the diversity issue. Club culture is your club's personal brand. We've talked about the Rotary brand experience overall, and that's something that we need to have that common voice and speak the same way and communicate the same way. But when it comes to your club, you can be different. You can do things a little different. All of these right here are part of your club's culture. And it used to be, as Steve was saying, that Rotary International limited some of that, gave you directives on what to do and how to do it. But that's not the case anymore. So no excuses. You need to take a look at these things and say, what is our club culture? And where is club culture really? It's, it's in the hearts and minds of the club members. It's how club members feel about the club and what makes the club the club. Sometimes we think we know. You're the incoming president. You're like, oh, yeah, I know my club. We're great. We're doing things fantastic. Everyone loves it. But maybe that's not the case. So one thing that you may want to consider, and what we're going to do right now, is take a little club culture quiz or test or worksheet. And so if you can open up to page 22, you will see this right here. I want you to evaluate your own club. Do not look at your neighbors. <laughs> and it's a sliding scale. Do you feel that your members are engaged, satisfied members? Five or four. You have disengaged members. Maybe you're down in the one, two, three area. So this one's really quick. Just go through and circle a number that you think represents your club. So now I'd like you to flip your page over and see on the back a couple of questions. What do your members love about your club? So this is you thinking about your membership. What would you say your members love? Is there something that turns members off? And what three things could you do to improve or enhance the club experience, the club culture? We're going to be coming back to this as well as the yes and no pages eight and nine that on the uh, Rotary Brand Experience quiz that you took earlier. We're going to be coming back to that in just a few minutes. But first, what if you evaluate your club culture, what if you gave every member the opportunity to fill this out and get that feedback from every member in the club? Because remember what Wendy said? Club culture resides in the heart and in the mind of your members. It's not on a banner on the wall. It's not on your website. It resides in there. You may have a perception of what you think your members believe the club culture to be, but wouldn't it be neat to find out what they really think? So if you do this, there's a consequence, because then you've got to do something about it. Okay? It doesn't, it doesn't improve club culture to take a quiz and then throw them all in a box and ignore them. You know, it, it, it does require action. The board has to do something about the club culture. And if you find three things that could be improved from your members, and then you don't do anything about that, that actually harms club culture. So be, be aware, there is a consequence there. 
So then what do you do? What do you do? You found these things that need to be improved in your club. Where do you go for information? Where do you go for materials to help you? Well, one place, of course, is on your great, your great district website that you have. There's lots of resources available there. But I've been telling you all along about this zone website. And everybody, when you say zone, everybody's eyes kind of glass over. It's like, is that the twilight zone? What kind of zone are you talking about? Well, we happen to be on the west coast here in zone 25. Okay, So I'm a rotary coordinator for zone 25. Well, what that means is that we've got this website that's called zone2526.org. The URL is right here on page 21 at the bottom, and you can circle it. And it tells you how to get into the area where all these materials are that we've been talking about today. But essentially, what happens is if you click on Strength and Clubs, a pull-down menu comes down, and one of the choices is membership. You click on that, and you go to Membership Resources, which is explained here on page 21. And it'll take you right into a Dropbox where all the videos are, all these quizzes are, the full version of the workbooks, and everything else that we've been talking about today is all available for download there. <clears throat> now, depending upon what kind of browser you're using, it may require you to click the download button up in the corner, or it may be a pull-down menu. But once you download it, you can put it right on your desktop. And there's a document in there called the Member Resource Guide, <clears throat> this updated quarterly, that is a super neat document to have on your computer. Now, there's a hard copy of it in your work. So anyway, the hyperlinks don't work real well when it's on paper. So I strongly suggest that you download it, put it on your um, desktop. It's really neat because it has every single resource that we've been talking about today, including the new Be a Vibrant Club document, which is great. They've um, really simplified it, and it's super easy. The Rotary Club Health Check. Anybody familiar with the Club Health Check? Okay. Well, that, that's on there, too. You can download that electronically and have your club members review that, fill it out for you. So all these resources are available in that one easy document. Jerry? Are these the same materials on the RI site? Uh, they are. But it's, what it is is it's just an easier way to get to it. You know? So sometimes it can be a little bit cumbersome trying to find things on the RI website. And our senior regional membership officer, Nicole Jones, has put a ton of effort into this document, and she updates it quarterly. It's really a nice document. And lastly, of course, the RI website has some great tools as well. And uh, how many of you ever logged in and created your profile on MyRotary? Oh, quite a few. Very good, very good. Once you do that, it gives you access to various work groups and areas where you can get a lot of information. But I would really strongly encourage you to go in there and look at the Brand Center. The Brand Center now has all of the People of Action campaign available. And it's really neat because you can just take a photo of an activity that your club is doing, maybe a work project where everybody's smiling and they're working away. And then you can lay the, the, um, the template on top of it so it says pe People of Action, We Inspire, or, you know, whatever, whichever one you put. They look great on social media or on your website. And that document that I was talking about, that's that one right there, the Membership Resource Guide. All those hyperlinks then just take you right where you want to be. Okay, a couple of uh, very important people. You all know Corey in the back of the room, your membership chair. Corey, here's his contact information. Yay, Corey. Thank you for coming on board midstream. And then uh, Katie, who you met earlier, and there's her email address uh, again. And then here's... I'm Steve Lingenbrink. You guys have Vicki Pulitz and Steve Lewis that are also available as resources for you. And I'm happy to give you their information if you have any need to contact them. I also have a few of my rotary cards up here if you want to grab one. But now it's time. We're here. This is where the rubber meets the road. Okay?
This is where it all is going to happen. Wendy? Thanks, Steve. So at the beginning of the day, we start off by telling you we wanted to help you learn how to create the best rotary brand experience possible. And we've talked a lot about it. We've shared ideas and you've done some worksheets. And all of this is for the purpose of attracting and retaining your members. And personally with your club, creating the best club culture for your club. You've done quite a few little activities today. We started off with the Rotary Brand Experience on page eight and nine, uh, identifying in your club yeses and nos, and we all agreed that we didn't get solid yeses, so we know there's some areas there to work on. Uh, you did the survey that we just did, the front and back side, and let's see which other ones. Um, I think those are the survey ones that we did. Hopefully you've been taking notes. You've heard some ideas from people or maybe from us, and so you've written those down. What I want you to do now is take all that information and work on your own personal action plan. This is, and if you turn in your book, yep. to page 28, 25, thank you, to page 25, you will see there, there's an area that one has been completed on one page as an example, and that's just an example. You do not have to do any of those things. And then there's a blank one, an area for you to fill it out. It has things that you're going to do immediately. You've got an area for things that take a little bit longer, 30 days out, three months out. So take a few minutes now. This is an individual exercise. Look back on all those resources, those little quizzes, assessments that you took, the notes that you took, and fill out your personal action plan. <laughs> 